साईराम स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट ऑनलाइन सेशन ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट साइंस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द चैप्टर वन दैट इज द लिविंग वर्ल्ड अडेप्टेशन एंड क्लासिफिकेशन लास्ट ईयर वी हैड लर्न अबाउट द लिविंग थिंग्स एंड नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स लिविंग थिंग्स आर दोज विच कैन मूव फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स आर दोज विच कैन नॉट मूव from one place to another examples of living things are plants animals and non living things are chair table etc so there is a lot of diversity of plants and animals on the earth we see lot of plants around us surroundings some plants they are tall in size some are small in size we see a lot of plants grown in water snowy regions desert and some plants we can also see only under the electron microscope <coughs> same way there is a lot of diversity in the animals too there are aquatic animals terrestrial animals amphibians reptilians and aerial now aquatic animals means those which can live in water terrestrial means those which can live on land amphibian means those which can live on land as well as water reptilian means those which can crawl and aerial means those which can fly some animals are unicellular and some are multicellular now unicellular means single celled organism and multicellular means containing many cells multiple cells so examples of unicellular organism are amoeba paramecium and examples of multicellular organism are human beings fishes etc same way there are some vertebrate animals and invertebrate animals vertebrates are those which have a vertebral column and invertebrates are those which do not have a vertebral column examples of vertebrates are humans snakes fishes etc and examples of invertebrates are earthworm uh, amoeba paramecium etc so one by one we will see about the adaptation in the aquatic plants as well as in the uh, animals so before that we will see what is the definition of adaptation gradual changes occur in the body parts and also in the behavior of the organisms which help them to adjust to their surroundings such changes are called as adaptation children if you are asked the definition of adaptation then you are going to write this definition that gradual changes occur in the body parts and also in the behavior of the organisms which help them to adjust to their surroundings such changes are called adaptation now we will see about the adaptation in the aquatic plants as i already told you aquatic plants are those which grow in water the aquatic plants many of the aquatic plants their roots they are firmly anchored in the soil and their leaves and the flowers they float on water and many of the aquatic plants their stems are submerged in and the leaves and the flowers they float on water many of the aquatic plants their uh, roots are not anchored in the soil so they entirely afloat leaves of aquatic plants are thin and slender like ribbon and because of this reason they can withstand the fast currents of water air spaces in the stems and the petioles of many aquatic plants helps them to float in the water the surface of the leaves and stems are covered with a waxy layer if you can see the leaf of the lotus plant it is 
got a waxy layer similarly the leaf of the colocasia leaf has also got as a waxy layer so because of this reason the water does not get accumulated on it now let us move to the adaptation in desert plants as you all know in the desert cactus grows so let us see about the adaptation desert plants they are almost leafless small needles or modified into thorns and because of this reason they lose very little water by evaporation the stem it stores water and food and therefore it is fleshy since the stems are leafless they can perform the process of photosynthesis there is a thick layer of waxy substance on the stems of these de desert plants too the roots of these plants they deep penetrate into the soil in search of water so now let us move to the adaptation in the plants of snowy regions coniferous trees like deodar and pine grow in the snowy regions they are conical in shape and with the sloping branches because of the conical shape whenever there is heavy rainfall or extreme cold the snow does not get accumulated on the tree because of the conical shape the thick bark helps to withstand the cold now let us move to the adaptation in forest and forest regions the forest regions there are a variety of plants trees shrubs and herbs they compete among themselves for sunlight climbers and vines they grow at a great height with the support of a plant let us move to the adaptation in grassland plants grassland plants there is a variety of bushes and grasses now because they have got a fibrous root it prevents soil erosion in the equatorial region the grasses grow very tall and because of this reason lion tiger deer they can easily hide in these grasses whereas in the cold regions the grasses are small and because of this reason you can find the animals like rabbit over there so now let us move to the adaptation for ingestion of food in plants many of the aquatic plants many of the plants that grow in the soil are autotrophic now autotrophic means they can prepare their food themselves now plants like dodder that is cascata it is a parasitic plant parasites parasitic plants are those which cannot prepare their food themselves and they depend on the other plants for food they have yellow wire like stems now since they are leafless they cannot perform the process of photosynthesis that's the reason they absorb the nutrients that is the food and the water from the host plant fungi it does not have chlorophyll and that's the reason it cannot perform the process of photosynthesis it grows on starchy substances like bhakri and bread it has got fibrous root and because of this it absorbs the nutrients from the other food plants they require nitrogen potassium and phosphorus for their growth venus flytrap drosera pitcher these plants since they grow in soil they are deficient in nitrogen so their deficiency is removed as they have the capability to attract the insects they consume the insects and with the help of this the nitrogen deficiency is covered now let us move to the adaptation in animals adaptation in aquatic animals is that you have seen the fishes they have scales on skin and fins on body the body tapers at both the ends 
and hence it looks like a spindle fishes breathe through the gills and they have got transparent eyelids they have air bladders within the body and because of this reason they can swim in water now let us see about the aquatic animal duck now the duck it has got web toes and it uses its legs like oars now oars is nothing but a long pipe which is used to row a boat the duck has got waxy feathers and because of this the water flows off from its feathers web toes slippery smooth skin and triangular head is the description of the frog because of these the frogs can swim in water now frogs you know that it is called as an amphibian because it lives on land as well as in water that's the reason it is called as an amphibian whenever it is in water it breathes through the skin and whenever it is on the land it breathes through the lungs and the nose now the frog has got a typical color on its back and because of this reason it can hide easily in the grasses now let us move to the adaptation in forest and grassland animals carnivorous animals like lion tiger they have got strong lens log strong legs and because of this reason they can run very fast and capture their prey easily they have got claws and canine teeth which are sharp and pointed they have got padded paws and because of this they can silently stalk their prey and capture the prey easily their eyes they are located in the front of the head and because of this reason they can spot their prey from a long distance in the herbivorous animals the eyes are <coughs> located below the forehead they have got long legs and because of this reason they can run fast and take long heaps they have long and freely moving ears and because of this they can hear the sound from different directions and long distances as i told you their eyes are located below the forehead this gives them a wide angle vision to protect them from the predators now let us see about the adaptation in desert animals desert means there is scarcity of water so here the animals which are there they have got a thick skin to prevent the loss of water from the body they have got long legs with flat and cushioned soles the nostrils are protected by the folds of the skin and the eyelashes are thick and strong rats snakes lizards spiders which are there in the desert they are active at night whereas in the day time they live in the deep burrows now let us move through the adaptation in animals of snowy regions now the animals found in the snowy regions are yak polar bear white fox silver fox siberian husky dog snow leopard etc their characteristics are that the body color is white or skin white or silver color they have got long hair and thick skin now let us move through the adaptation in aerial animals as i told you that the aerial animals are those which can fly in the sky so the spindle shaped body of the bird minimizes the resistance of air while flying with hollow bones body covered with feathers and the four wings four legs can modified into wings makes their body light in weight 
and is adapted for flying insects also they are light in weight and have a tapered body at both the ends they fly they can also fly with the two pairs of wings and also walk with the six stick like legs bats they can fly with the help of patagium a fold of skin between the four legs and the hind legs now let us move through the adaptation in reptiles adaptation in reptiles snakes earthworms etc the have you ever noticed them creeping can you just think what organ do they use for creeping they use muscles for creeping the adaptation in them is that about their skin sole feet and the body color house lizard it has got clawed toes and thin soles whereas the snakes it has got scaly skin so i hope students you might have understood about the adaptation in plants and animals first we saw about the adaptation definition then we saw about the adaptation in aquatic plants then adaptation in desert plants in forest and grassland regions and the snow regions then we saw about the adaptation for ingestion of food after that we saw about the adaptation in animals animals that live in the snowy regions desert regions forest and grassland regions then aquatic animals and the aerial animals as well as the reptiles so every animal or a plant has got some characteristic feature because of which it can survive in these surroundings students there is a home assignment which you are supposed to do let us meet in the next lecture thank you